Provo, Utah. This is the Ultimate Final Fantasy Podcast with your hosts, Joseph DeGaulier and Caleb Schweiss. This is Ultima Final Fantasy. Welcome to another episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate in Final Fantasy podcasts. I am your host, Caleb. I'm your other host, Joe. And today, Joe, we are on our second to last. We're reviewing our second to last on the way to a smile episode. These have been, we've been doing these for a long time. Oh. Was and Denzel like two years ago? I dude, yeah, I think it probably. Was. I, okay. I think we were like, hey, we should cover the seven stuff. And then it was like, hey, let's not worry about it because we have all this <laughs> other shit to do. But now we don't, and I'm really excited to to get through these last two. Not that I don't like them, I'm just really interested in the uh, Final Fantasy X stuff that we have yet to get into because I honestly I know n- almost nothing there's a novel and an audio drama yeah I, I know nothing of those and we don't even know if we can get the novel yeah I think I think someone sent us a, a link to a translated probably copy. that's one of those things that I would forget yeah um, <laughs> but, it's been too long <laughs> but seriously like I know nothing of it and I kind of know um, or at least get the gist of what happened after the events of seven leading up to advent children or at least I you know created what they left out before in my own mind um but now we get to experience it and i yeah i'm glad it's kind of coming to an end glad it's almost over okay. yeah because yeah, okay. it's i don't know it's well produced and the livestream.net does a great job with it but some of it is just i like it's really awkward and i'm like okay all right so this is happening and then Oh, oh, I, you know, I could have done the last 20 minutes in like two sentences. I feel That's like true. I could have been like, uh, this happens and, uh, yeah, he feels really bad. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> there we go. But before we get into that, I mean, we, we got to talk about lightning returns uh, last week, <sighs> last week you hadn't even, hadn't even touched the game. I mean, I hope to God that's not true. Anymore. I have more than touched it twice. I have oh, wow. played within one week. I have played over 20 hours of lightning wow. returns in fact i am at the final boss in one save of mine right now found out i cannot beat the final boss right now despite every other enemy i've come across being very easy uh and so i am gonna have to do some side quests and, and grind out some better equipment so right yeah the that's nice thing all i have to do left there is a little uh a little thing to do another new game plus but i don't know if you want to do that I don't want to do another new game plus and I have like eight days. Okay. So you have left plenty of time in my other save. Yeah, man. I think, I think when I, uh, cause I had to do, I went to the, I got to the final boss earlier in the week. No, it was, it was, uh, Oh my, Oh my God. It was Saturday night. <laughs> I know Friday night leading into Saturday morning. It sounds, it feels like it was so fucking long ago. And the reason is because I've played like 20 hours of this game in the last two days. Uh, anyway, the long, long ago time of two nights, <laughs> two nights before you guys are hearing this, I got to the final dungeon and I, I couldn't beat the final boss. I only died once though. I got to his second stage like halfway through and then I died and I was like, um, all right, you know what? I'm going to go around because there's like these extra little dungeons near the very end that you can go try and try your hand at. And I guess you get you get new spells and you get uh, lightning's weapon unlocked, apparently. So I was like, you know what? I I can't beat the final guy right now, but I'm going to try one of these. The first one I try, I just get absolutely wrecked on. And I'm like up there. It's like four in the morning. I'm like livid. I'm like, fuck (laughs) this, man. I can't even I can't even beat the the optional little dude on the side. Um, and it, let alone the final boss. So I, I just fucking walked in there, talked to Hope, New Game Plus, and then I, I, I played like 13 hours yesterday, and I got most everything done in the game. Actually, I did like 40 something or 50 something side quests. A bunch of the, Jesus. a bunch of the little. Um, you are Canvas doing like prayers. massive damage in comparison to me. Yeah. Yeah, like sick amounts of damage in comparison to me. Yeah, it's I still have trouble on some fights though. Like the the guy I just beat was like uh Yeah, but Earth those are eater. optional shit. It's true, it's true. But 
I'm not in optional stuff. <laughs> in I my... decided to tunnel vision that shit. Well, I mean, this is exactly Twice. yeah. This is exactly <laughs> what I said would happen. Like I was like, guys, don't worry about lightning returns. Uh, not that anybody's like dying to hear our thoughts on this. No game one has. That... You know what? Surprisingly, no one has been like, hey, what the hell? Where's lightning returns? Yeah, yeah. No one said that. You know why? It's no one has said that yet. Almost. It, I'm sure. Like almost no one's played it. Yeah, there's only like why? one one point two million or a couple million copies sold. I don't know. I'll know by next week when we. Spoilers have the uh, review for this game, hopefully. but uh, yeah, hopefully, um, hopefully, I, yeah, hopefully, lowercase. God H. knows if we'll be able to beat it, but hopefully, we can. <laughs> Hope for the two people who play Lightning Returns. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, the three people on our podcast <laughs> and our podcast listener base. So yeah, I'm at the very end. I did the. I did the two big optional fights. Um, I found pretty pretty cheap ways to go about them online uh, one of them i just used poison like all day it was kind of depressing watching that poor guy up there like doing all his super moves not doing any damage to me and then his life just ticking away just thousands of damage per second just flying out of this guy he's like throwing up blood up there and oh i'm just <laughs> he's just taking it he can't do anything so i've gotten all of that out of the way i'm gonna do another new game plus I'm not going to play all the way through, but I, I need to beat the game to then unlock this like weapon and armor um, customizing tool where you can actually add stats to particular pieces of equipment, which is kind of a cool idea and would have definitely come in handy if I could have beaten the game two nights ago for this yeah. playthrough that I did yesterday and yeah. today. So. My, my strategy is going to be go online and find someone's winning build and just copy it yeah <laughs> and then go in for the final boss again yeah that's what and I this did. time i get to skip all the cutscenes at the end of the days yeah i today after i had beaten all the main quests you then just have to wait for the world to end and i had like i said i think i had eight days left yeah and so oh my god that took forever like going back and forth and just watching cutscenes over and over again until yeah. they were finally finished right yeah some of which i had seen before because i played up to day nine i think so yeah that was no fun <laughs> yeah it's crazy um like and it's weird because the first time going through i i felt like it was a real time crunch like it was like it's a constant thing like pushing down on me keeping me down but uh New Game Plus, I did, like, all but one story quest in the first day. I don't know so. how you managed to do that, because there's, like, a couple that are timed out. And so you have to be at one place at 6 p.m., yeah. one place at, like, 10 p.m., and then you have to be at the other place at 7 p.m. So I guess if you chronostasis in the right order, which you must have done. I did. It took me three days. Dude, it's sick. Which was, it still wasn't much, but... yeah. It's the sick part is, is if I would have thought about it, I would have done all of them in one day because I advanced time to 6 p.m. to get the one in Yusnan or Luxerian. And then I did the same thing for um, the one in Yusnan. I advanced it to like midnight so I could do the fireworks quest. And then I didn't have, I almost had enough time to finish out both the Caius and the Chocobo thing, but I had to go get the dodge stuff and I had one more uh, thing to do. I had I fought the cactuar, the little cactuar mm -hmm. with the fro, and then I didn't have enough uh, EP or CP to get me back to Saws to turn it in. So the next day, oh. the first thing I did was turn it in, and I was done. There you go. It was crazy. I was like, damn it, I could have yeah. done it. I I mostly don't want to. I want to do side quests and starting a third instead of starting a third ga new game plus. Yeah, because uh, that. <laughs> I just don't want to do those things again. Dude, the Dead Dunes one is a drag. It takes forever. You have to, like, go to one place to get stuff to then go to this other place to uh -huh. unlock stuff. And there's and a big, like, like, puzzle to find all the, what are they, Pilgrim's Cruxes? Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't want to find them again. Yeah, it's it's not. That's the one that I did last during this time because I was like, damn it, dude. I, I did that, that one in between like times I had to wait for. At least on that one, you don't have to wait for like, oh, the, the fireworks thing opens it. Yeah, it's like, hello, <laughs> we're on a time crunch here. What do you mean I have to wait six hours? <laughs> the world's ending, man. Just launch the fireworks off. Who cares? Who gives a shit? I also found like a... <laughs> A thing where there was the last main quest in one of the areas, like Lunan or whatever, or Luxia. Luxurian, yeah. Luxuria. And um, 
and I was supposed to wait for, uh, spoilers, uh, Vanille to show up in this cathedral and she just wasn't there. Yeah. I, I got into the cathedral before the time that I would get locked out of it, mm-hmm. but it wa- it needed me to do a side quest in order to go the other way back into the same place. Yeah. Yeah. You have to go in that one was back door. Super lame. I know. I'm like, what do you mean? I can't just like figure out ways to get around this. Come on. This whole game is about just, you know, fucking with things and doing things in your own order. And I can't walk into the cathedral cathedral right before it closes, wait for it to close. And then she can't just show up. Yeah. It's kind of lame, especially cause she's like on duty at all hours of yeah. the day kind of a thing. What? So it's just bullshit. Yeah. It was dumb, but Yell shut. I can't believe how much I played though this week. Yeah. My brain is for a ride i can't play anymore today i'm done dude i'm done totally, for today I i'm think I, totally going back into it i woke up at like what 1 30 and what time is it now uh 9 p.m okay it's sunday evening <laughs> and for the last hour i ate and played some guitar so what i did seven and a half hours or whatever it's yeah the you know the sick uh, part is is i had uh i i played 13 hours yesterday at least and um, we did our show and we did our show and we watched game of thrones yeah and i watched game of thrones and i was still playing and i <laughs> i have been playing i woke up at like 8 30 or nine o'clock today and i i've just been playing lightning returns that's been my day what happened to me was all of the things that were stressing me out for the last few weeks disappeared <laughs> so and, had time. and so i was suddenly like oh shit i have time time i should be spending you know to doing something productive but instead i'm gonna play this video game for hours on end yeah so well it's it's awesome though i mean it's funny because they did the same thing with 13 too it's just like <laughs> i was kind of like playing it a little bit and then you just like two days two and a half days it's like all right i'm done and then i'm like shit i need to catch up <laughs> and i beat it like an hour or like four hours after you so this is our way i guess so <laughs> i was okay this is what was happening so i was trying to get a job that required like a lot of bullshit to to go through i had to go through a lot of hoops to try to get this job i ended up not getting the job but that didn't matter what happened was like for two weeks i was just like just trying to get this freaking job so i had to like go buy a suit and do all this other stuff and then i had um, school stuff that was still finishing up, including a big project that I ended up doing half of it at work in the middle of the night when I should be pretending to work. And, <laughs> and uh, ugh, God, so I like almost killed myself for like two and a half weeks. And I played Tales of Zestaria. I did yeah, find yeah. time for that. And there was just no time for Lightning Returns. And now things have opened and i have one more class to attend i'm waiting for a final sound mix and uh final music mix mix on a movie i will go to class on thursday and i will go to the school on friday and we're gonna have our little private premiere of the movie and then i'm graduating on may 4th and i have nothing because i already quit my other job (laughs) so just another week week of work and then it's just yeah it doesn't i can't obviously i obviously can't spend all my time playing the video games but i will have some time to get some video games yeah it's good because we have final fantasy 14 right around the corner and we both know (laughs) how much of a time sink that motherfucker even even if we're just doing the minimum like the minimum amount of stuff you you still have like four or five days from last time don't you so i gotta try to get a real man's job a different one and um that's going to require i think i'm gonna i think i'm gonna time out my days like i've been doing on the other one so like pick out three days of the week and those will be final fantasy 14 in the afternoon okay um and that'll probably be enough to to move forward it was last time oh oh yeah it was plenty last so, time so i assume that it'll be just fine but yeah i then, am i am excited to get to 14 again yeah and the nice thing about 14 is if i do get way ahead of you which i probably will i oh maybe not though i have a shitload of games that people have been giving me that i've said that i will play and now i'm like 
just watching as my time just floats. Hey, you know away. why I? Yeah. That's a that's a good reason why I said I would not do that. I would yeah. not promise to play every yeah. game they send us for Nude Clan, and the reason why is because I you I feared. don't make enough money off of this show and off of Nude Clan to support myself. And if I did, guys. You'd get me for eight hours a day. Uh, yeah, yeah we'd, we'd, be, uh, we'd be hitting that stream <laughs> if, like, all the time. If I could support myself, I would just be playing these games, but I can't. And, yeah. and UFF, by the way, eight hours a day for YouTube, UFF, we'd be done with the show in like six months. Yeah, it would not be very long, <laughs> which would be depressing. I mean, who wants this to end? I, I don't, for sure. So, you okay. know. All right. And start our Tales of Our Tales podcast, of podcast yeah. or Metal Gear Solid podcast or Zelda podcast we tried to start. Yeah, you know what? That would be a lot of fun, actually. You know, let's just cancel. Or, no, not you. We'll do our, our our own Patreons. So if you want to support me. Yeah, yeah. You support <laughs> Joe at uh, patreon.com slash Joe Fund. <laughs> and Caleb. Yeah. So uh no, but that that will be like just whatever creative project if you Yeah, no matter what. <laughs> this month uh, the like $10 tier is you've paid for my diet coke for the week. <laughs> yeah, so that's awesome. You get all the coke rewards points. Oh my god, yeah, you should you send him the uh <laughs> Yeah, I clip on all, all the little codes and just send them to him. Um but seriously yeah. though, uh, lightning returns we will be should be reviewing next week. Um, Should be, dude. Wow, yeah. this was fast. I know. I mean, it wasn't really fast for the listeners. It definitely wasn't fast, but for for me, it's fast. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, all of a sudden, lightning returns, and it should be done soon. Jesus. Yeah, it's crazy though because I don't know. Uh, with thirteen two, like it was a really short game, and there's there are, you know, there's a good amount of post game stuff in that. I ended up at fifty nine hours. And I was thinking Lightning Returns, I bet you it's going to be a short, quick thing, which second time through, extremely quick. But first time, I don't know. Like, it, it, it felt just about as long as uh, as thirteen two easily. And it was in like a weird way. Yeah, cause it's different. I know, you have so much time available to you, but not enough, it feels like. <laughs> I don't know, it's crazy. It's, it's unlike anything I've played, so... Excited to it's a very non-linear Final Fantasy. I can say that. Yeah. The only thing that's linear is at the end of each day you get a cutscene. Yeah, that's true. Um, but it is. you can you can beat the main story in any order that you want. You don't get experience through battles, which is nuts. Yeah, it's that's you get the craziest part. <laughs> you get the experience only through questing. Yeah. Uh, and so. You know, you can do a whole bunch of side quests and get small amount of stat boosts, or, mm. and you can do the main quest and get large stat boosts. Um, I, it's crazy, Schweiz, and I love the battle system. People were telling me that the battle system was weird and crappy. Yeah, I don't and agree. I was yeah. like, I know you were bitching about it for the first half of the game, but yeah, I got about an hour in, and I was like, nope, this is genius. It's I a lot it. of it's a lot of fun. So I don't know. I don't know if I agree with the sentiments I've heard before I started. Yeah, I, I still don't think I still like thirteen twos a little bit more, but well, yeah, but they're they're different systems. So Lightning Returns, if you guys haven't played it, it's a action RPG, but it utilizes the active time sort of uh, system. Yeah, by giving you only so many moves in a row that you can do via your. I guess paradigm, but whatever they, the schemata is what they call it yeah. in this one. And I think it, uh, it makes more real, real world sense than a regular active time does. They're yeah. Also it does. very quick battles and they're very strategic in their own way. I love it. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, Alistair, Alistair gives us a good point on the Twitch chat. He says it's an FF game with side quests that aren't fucking cancer. And I agree. <laughs> I actually like the side quests in this game. They are, pertinent to what's going on and they make sense in the scope of the overall story and of course they give you your only hope for any sort of stat boost other than the main quest so it's it's weird they have like an extinction mechanic with the enemies there's it's crazy it's like a very different final fantasy game but i i've had fun i think it's a very active battle system yeah it's, it's good shit well Shrice, i think uh i think we'll have to leave the rest of the lightning returns talk till until next, next week. week when we actually review it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, let's just go ahead and go start the news. Let's do it. News, news, news. 
news. News. First up in this very light news week, the city of Final Fantasy on arcade, of course, adds the Dragon King Bahamut as a new summon. So if you're in Japan and you enjoy the Dissidia arcade game, you can summon Bahamut on an April 20th update for the arcade. Fire. Enjoy it, Japanese players. Yeah. Um, I, I bet you eventually we'll probably get this, um, get this game, but I don't know. Maybe not. I think it'd be cool if they, if they did it in the, uh, in the arcade like in, in local arcades, like I don't know how the fuck we would manage that, but like if if they just made it an arcade game, like an actual arcade game, so like we could get like one or two and we can actually go play it and like review it, you know? I think that'd be sweet. So you want to order a big arcade game from Japan? No, I want somebody else to order it for oh, me, and I'll pump it. I'll pump quarters into the bag. I wonder if some freak in California has done that already, and we can just like go to his place. Yeah, go. Uh, <laughs> if if you have the Dissidia <laughs> arcade game from Japan, um, hit us up on our site, or if you know anybody, multiplefinalfantasy.com. <laughs> So Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac, we have a few new sets of screenshots. Uh, We'll take a look at these real quick. Take a look at that. Uh, It looks, I think it looks pretty good. I mean, we're seeing a lot more detail with both ears, jacket, and like that shit. It looks good. Um, Pretty much looks like twelve, but yeah, like we like we've <laughs> said before, twelve looked pretty fucking good anyway. So it it's like, I mean, it's just crisper and yeah, it definitely is. Oh, let's see if we can get a spray tan. Oh shit, it's blurry right there. Uh, you're looking for the spray tan abs, yeah, the here? Vaughn abs. <laughs> um, oh, less spray tanny. Look at that in that frame. Yes, but this this is not the highest quality uh, screenshots either. No, anyway. they're they really aren't. Uh, no. But yeah, so that's coming, and I am so fucking excited to play Final Fantasy twelve. I'm excited to not play it, but yeah, I'll enjoy everybody else's excitement for it and say I already beat it for this run. So yeah, that's fair. <laughs> so Final Fantasy fourteen has a new patch, and it brings nerfs to the anima weapon quests. Not that I know anything about that, and if you want to know more about that, check out Limit Break Radio, who I'm sure went into deep Probably, detail with it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so. Final uh, Fantasy 12 again. The Zodiac Age is getting an official live stream on April 26th. That is Tuesday. Wait, no. So they're going to be playing this Wednesday. game that we've already played? Yes. They're going to uh, be playing it. In higher definition. Um, live stream in Japan, 8 p.m. Japanese time. J- so, JST. What the hell is that? Japanese? Japanese Japan? standard time? Oh, standard time. Maybe? Okay. Yeah, that, that seems... They're going to have some behind-the-scenes talk, um, basically normal dev stuff, uh, previewing a game. So that'll be cool. It's it, You know, honestly, it's really awkward that they are doing this much for Final Fantasy XII. Like, I get it. It's a great game. I have a lot of fun. It's a tremendous game. Fantastic but, game. Yeah, the best but game. We all know what it looks like. like we know it's going to be a higher def version of Final Fantasy XII. So it's weird to be like, oh, check out our live stream, like trying to build hype for it in a way, because... I feel like, I, I, I don't know, I feel like the hype's already there. It's one that's like a like a no-brainer. If you didn't play it because it's on PS2, you'll play it. And if you loved it, you'll play it. So It's a good game. It's I think it'd be weird game. for someone to be like, wait, like a new person into the series, be like, well, so 15 just came out, but here's Final Fantasy 12. They're like, what in God's name? Is this like the 6-3 thing? <laughs> this will be that thing where they can't get in. <laughs> yeah. They refuse to go on Wikipedia and figure things out. Yeah, yeah. They're like, no, no, no. It's three, okay? It was three for me, so it's three. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it'll be... No, it was 16 in U.S. Um, So FF15, speaking of recent Final Fantasies, is adding a stable frame rate option for PlayStation 4 Pro. (sighs) On April 27th. So if you're a millionaire... Yeah, if you you want your (laughs) PlayStation 4 to be a computer in disguise... You can get a nice stable well, mode. It technically is a computer. It is, yeah, but it, all of it. <laughs> they they are. They do compute. So uh, we are also getting um, some more of those timed quests that I was very excited about, and then I played fifteen for a hundred hours, and I can't say I've. I don't even know where it is. Actually, I had it in my car for a couple of days. I think I took it out. I think I took it out. 
So don't worry, Troy. It's fine. The copy's safe wherever it's at. <laughs> but why was it in your car? I loaned it to one of the people I worked with. Oh, yeah. okay. And he didn't beat it, but that sucks. Okay. But and yeah, you were like, pay up, bitch. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> uh, well, he was quitting too. So I was like, dude, you you got to bring this game. This thing was. I, I didn't pay for it, but it was very expensive for the man who did. So <laughs> it means a lot to me. Uh, so if you guys are still in 15 look forward to that if you've got a ps4 pro i didn't really notice any frame issues personally the only thing i found atrocious in 15 was that adamant toys fight and that was just i don't think it was a frame rate thing it was just like a like a physics thing. It was like awful. They, oh, you mean it was terrible? Yeah, like they oh, built whatever. it. Like they just. Oh, you mean it was the worst fight ever <laughs> yeah. in any Final Fantasy game? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'd rather fight the Demon oh. Wall from FF4 under level. So there's, there's a problem with the Adamant Toys fight. Yeah. Wait, <sighs> and it's so, it's such a. Where is that patch? It hurts me. Where's the <laughs> shitty Adamant Toys fight patch? Well, we already killed it. We wouldn't even know. I guess that's true. And yeah, you can use the ring. Oh, you could. I guess you might be able to go back and. I was like, duh, you'd use the. <laughs> yeah, I. Oh, they do have that one. That one video we saw last week too, or a couple yeah, of weeks that's ago. That's what I'm the, talking about. The insta kill, just like insta insta rock, and that at least makes the fight bearable, right? <laughs> yeah, not, if you're standing far away from it, yeah. It's not 40 minutes of. Oh man, I really of wish like I could see what's the happening. The inside of a model of a turtle's eye. Yeah, it's like so you built them like the first 10 feet you built, and then the rest you were I just like. I can't believe they didn't have any testers going up against that thing. I know it was a big deal. Like, all it would take is one playthrough of that fight to realize this is not working. Yeah, you just like go to the dev team and be like, "All right, here's the copy of Shadow of the Colossus." Now make this work in a way that's still FF15. Somewhere in between the two. Yeah, not this thing. Or um, like do it like one of the Titan fights, you know? Yeah, yeah. Only like harder. And yeah. You can die from it. Yeah, so that too, yeah. You could try one of those, but instead it was just like, oh, this is the clusterfuck fight. This is, uh... God, dude. Thanks yeah. for reminding me of that. Seriously, though, where's the patch for that, guys? Come on. It's okay. Unless it's already there and we're just talking it out did, of our asses. It funny. didn't really affect my review because I don't play side quests to all of them. If anybody hasn't listened to our review yet. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Although that was the one big one that you did decide to play and it's like... Oh, that kind of yeah, that's the one I decided to platinum <laughs> and then I had to do that Adamantois bullshit. Yeah, well, you know what? It wasn't least, even that hard of a fight. It was just really long and... Also, you couldn't see anything. Yeah, at least so. it wasn't the uh, the hundred hour or hundred and forty hour FF ten shit though. So like, just I got it done. Started like doing that. Hours. I just never finished doing that. Yeah, dude, you you don't want to. It's I don't. Part of my soul is gone forever. I don't That's, want to. How many more of these Final Fantasy games are on PS3 and PS4? Just okay. There's we have Type Zero. Type zero. We've got FF fourteen. World of Final Fantasy. World of Final Fantasy. Um, Is that it? No, it's Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. Mm. Are you going to plan them all those? I think so. Okay. It's going to okay. be a lot. I oh, Man, I feel like I'm missing some Final Fantasy games, but shit, maybe not. I, I don't then we're going to get an email. Yeah, with like 40 of them in there. <laughs> um the FF7, I guess, the PS4 remaster that has trophies. I have. Does that go all the way to platinum? Yeah, it does. Oh, sweet. Yeah, Jake Platinum did in like. But we're not re- we're not replaying hours. FF7 for the show. True, but we're not replaying FF12 for the show either. That's I'm right. Still gonna play the still gonna play that remaster. But we so. do have to play Type Zero in the future. That's true. Yeah. So so I'll at least get one more. From you will just FF games. <laughs> okay, man. Um, you want to talk about this uh, live stream dot net? <laughs> Yeah, let's dive in. The Livestream.net presents On the Way to a Smile Case of Shinra At the ancient ruins, the mission assigned to Sung, leader of the Shinra Company's Department of Administrative Research, also known as the Turks, was to obtain the ancient and mysterious stone known as the Black Materia. Just as so, he last time we had uh, episode Nanaki, where we got the wonderful aftermath trans of Final species. Fantasy. Yeah, the trans species uh, Final Fantasy there you go. went there. You know, they uh, very <laughs> real progressive, progressive. Yeah, very progressive <laughs> series. It seems, and uh, this time we get we get some stuff about Shinra. Um, 
namely the El Presidente of Shinra and Rufus Shinra. Yeah, Rufus's Rufus's aftermath of Final Fantasy VII. And so, so it does sort of explain why he survived. Oh yes, the explosion. Uh, at Shinra headquarters, which we all saw him become engulfed in flames. On a very high level. A very high level. Fantastically high level. Tremendously high level. Yeah, the highest. Uh, the highest, exactly. Blew up. <laughs> we all saw him blow up. And then he shows up in Advent Children, and he's got the stigma, and he's... Yeah, and I was like, oh, and it was this big reveal, and I was like, what the fuck? That guy's dead. <laughs> that guy is so fucking dead, it is not even funny. I did not feel that way, because I watched Advent Children before I played 7. Okay. So. <laughs> God, you know, this... So afterwards, after I had played 7 and rewatched Advent Children, I was like, huh. I, I, we say I they... I guess he survived the yeah. explosion. We say they explain... But I say they explain. I said away. sort of. I say, I said they sort of explained. Jesus. Okay. Why so why Rufus Shinra? Survived. Here's here's what happened with Rufus on that fucking top floor. Him and his pop. Right. He he came to his dad one day. The ruthless, the monstrosity that is President Shinra. And he tells him, look, in case in case the building gets under attack or we're mm. in danger, we should build. He's a child. He's a child. So he doesn't like idea. go up to him and goes, listen, you need a new strategy. Yeah. Yeah. The no. Daddy comes home and usually he's like this big jerk. Yeah. Yeah. And, he's, and then today he's really happy because he has the new plans for Shinra headquarters and his presidential office. And then he's like, look at the plans. And then his son, the very perceptive son Rufus yeah. Shinra then he goes oh daddy you should you should put a way to get out of there just in case something happens yeah so at this point i mean are we to believe that he knows his dad is a piece of shit and he is just evil beyond belief or he knows that shinra has enemies okay so he at least acknowledges that shinra has enemies whether or not shinra is like fly the a bad jet guy. plane into the into the side of the headquarters <laughs> yeah yeah Jesus. just to save the the planet right um but yes, apparently he comes to his father when, when he presents these plans and he has them build an escape route. And that is what he uses to get out of there when he gets weapon blasted. I call complete bullshit on that. That is ridiculous. We imagined a slide of some kind. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a shoot. <laughs> yeah. Like a, like a super long laundry shoot. Right, yeah, yeah. That's what you were thinking. I was thinking like more of a water park ride, right? So like the, the weapon, the, the shot comes in, it blasts. Rufus is like, oh man, thank God we have this thing. And he, he jumps in and it's this water slide and it's got like a bunch of loop-de-loops. It takes yes. like two minutes for him to get down yes. to the bottom. And he's got like his, uh, his office buddies in there and they're like, Put your hands in the air. Yeah. You know, like Emperor's new groove and shit, and they just go down, and he's... Exactly like that. He's like, oh, man, that was fun. I gotta get out of here. Well, it's like the barrel sequence in The Hobbit. Like yeah, it yeah, suddenly yeah. becomes this huge moment. Yeah, it's... Yeah, <laughs> it, I that's that's the only thing I can think of because he was like it blew up and he's getting like pushed across the floor so he must have like timed his slide right into the water slide that I didn't see on the building before. I, yeah, he should at least be concussed or something. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that was a big explosion, man. It's you know I honestly wonder if if they would have had him live in the original uh, game or not because like he isn't he doesn't come back. No. It's like, was the idea that he was alive, or is that something they just threw in later? It, no, yeah, they had to throw it in later, dude. It seems so weird, though. Like, make it a guy that's alive. What Does Rufus really need to be, like, uh, I don't know, like, a uh, come back from his evil ways, like, renounce the atrocities that his father stood for? Like, does that actually matter? Because I don't, I don't think it does, but... I, I don't know. So that's how he that's how he lives. Um, he has uh, he does have some daddy issues. I wrote down here, um, old Rufus, and he 
seems to be kind of suicidal for a little while. I mean, this is kind of like a theme with the post FF seven world. That, yeah. Everybody has the, the geo stigma because they either no longer have a will to live or they are just depressed. This one has presented us with, it this gave us fact. a new variable. Yes, yeah, so you can still wish to live, but be depressed and still die because you're depressed. So uh, keep that shit in check. There you go. Um, let's see what else. Uh, oh, there was a there was a <laughs> there's a line in this thing that is it goes that fateful day known by many as that day and i was like what it was just bad it was just, yeah, you know, it was it was awkward some translation was a little awkward it's okay livestream.net does a great job no they do a great job i'm giving the writing shit like it was that one day no, no, known no, 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 by that many was never put in english they translated it that day yeah it's i i gotta i gotta wonder what that looks like in japanese there is though. a making of princess mononoke that uh that is really hard to find and has only like only has English subtitles for like the first half on YouTube. Someone did it and then didn't finish the project. So I've watched that thing. And one of the things that pops up there is what they're doing, the advertising for the Japanese audience, like on their posters, they were Mm -hmm. looking for a tagline for the movie. And then one that made me laugh out loud was life is life. And I'm like, (laughs) That doesn't mean shit. Yeah. So everyone <laughs> that that reminds me of that because you know everybody referred to that day as that day. Yeah. Like yeah. It's, or you know that sort of don't you understand that repeating this phrase gives it meaning? And um, there's something lost in translation there, definitely. Yeah. Or I mean, this Dissidia game that I can't let go. Dudokheim. Dudokheim. Yes. <laughs> Dissidia Dudokheim 12 Final Fantasy. <laughs> but, I, I mean, I Dude do... Dudokheim! <laughs> Dudokheim! I'm playing Dudokheim today! <laughs> but seriously, though, like, it, it, it seems to be a thing that they have these awkward things. Like, I get it, 12 is an important number, but the side of the box, I mean, it says t- Dissidia. Okay, I don't know what that is. Uh, I'm sure that's a word that's in another language that it's probably something meaningful and I'm just ignorant. Zero one two and then dude, in brackets, I, dude Kime. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> and then Final Fantasy. So the game is called Dissidia Zero One Two Twelve Final Fantasy. So it's twelve twelve Dissidia twelve twelve Final Fantasy Dude Kime. <laughs> On the PlayStation, Dude, on the PlayStation Decim, portal. Right, in case someone didn't listen. Yes, to the Duodecim is the actual. That happened, Duodecim. Yeah, which makes sense. But then I'm like, okay, but still, from an outside perspective, what the fuck does that even mean to me? <laughs> Nothing. Like, anyway, gonna leave du- Dude Kime alone. Life for now. is life. We refer to that day as that day. Dude Kime. Du- Dude Kime. Yes. Zero one two. Surprising amount of people at a busy bar. That's another awkward oh, line I remember oh, from yeah. this one. We've like, got some scenes with like Rufus and Reno. And Elena and Sang, right? Yeah, Sang. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they they mingle. <laughs> Is that it's somewhere in between those two scenes? But they mingle for a while, and at about midway through this thing, I was like, "Fucking nothing is happening in this." Yeah, show. yeah. This one, thing. I, it was two hours long. By the way, it was two hours long. The other one, I think, was maybe there's sometimes an hour. I, I think the other one was was an hour. Yeah, the yeah. episode um, Nanaki was an hour long. And yeah. I, I feel like that one was. This one's especially long and has way less shit in it. Right. Um, we almost get like three sections where Rufus is looking back on how he escaped, and then they yeah. all meet up again. And there's some shit going on with Shinro, which I can't even remember. And then uh, because it doesn't mean anything, and then he gets involved wait is the bar before or after he gets with the sick people uh the bar is when he first sees someone okay. sick so there's okay. like some dude in the back corner and he like notices him and he goes over to him and then he realizes he's dead and he's all stigmified and shit so that's when that's when he encounters the stigma for the first time and this is the first time by the way the stigma has ever been described I, w- I would like to, you know, thank this uh, on the way to a smile episode of Shinra 
because in Advent Children, it's like, oh, they're just sick. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, I, I did not know. The other ones, uh, including the other stories in this so far, as translated and uh, performed by Livestream.net, it's been, they're sick. This one, it goes, oh, they're oozing black disgustingness from them and they're in pain. Yeah. I, I was like, oh. I got it. So they look all black oily almost. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I feel like they've mentioned it maybe before. I know they've mentioned the stigma like in the water supply and shit like that. Yeah. But the weird thing is, is like what, who cares if it's in the water supply? As long as you're not the stigma, unless you have that emotional state. Yeah, exactly. So like bizarre, but I would just be drinking the stigma. Like no, no tomorrow. I could do it drink a chug 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 you know like it's a uh, only real real man drink stigma is what i what there i would come go. up with but uh yeah this that reminds me of uh i used to listen to love line when i was a kid they canceled love line it's really sad i used to listen to love line and steve-o from jackass used yeah. to come on all the time and he says he never gets sick because every time he went to a new country he would drink their water oh wow <laughs> So he would just get really sick there and for a so little bit. So he would or? just like he just said he was immune to it because he would do that. Wow! And I was like, oh, okay, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you just have a really good immune system. Yeah, right? maybe, maybe that. Uh, he wouldn't get the stigma though. He's way too happy. There you go. Um, so we also get a scene here where Rufus actually gets kidnapped, um, and he's uh, he's like constantly being questioned, being beaten down by this guy, and they're. Searching for answers to what? I don't know. Um, uh, I don't know. This this part was odd. Is Sephiroth coming back, possibly? That yeah, was, that yeah, was that kind was of one of them. Alluded to, because they're like, well, maybe there's something in the stigma with him in it. At least that's the impression I got. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then we have, uh, apparently, this, this captor of Rufus, he's... He's an old army man, a uh, guy who Rufus walked by all the time and basically had do his bidding. So this is sort of his his sort of revenge, revenge yeah, on the Shinra company and the Shinra um, president. And it's really awkward because they a lot of people it seems like people that aren't and maybe I maybe I just wasn't paying enough attention while I was grinding out lightning and listening to this. But it felt it felt to me like a lot of people we're calling him president Shinra and they didn't even work for Shinra. Like it would, or Mr. President, like Mr. President, w- would you, if the CEO for Maverick came in, would, would you I, say Mr. President to him? I would probably call him Mr. And then whatever his last name is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's awkward. It's like, Oh, uh, it's a big company. It's a big fucking company. We can't deny it. Or I biggest. just call him by his first name and be like, fuck you. I'm quitting in a week. Yeah, maybe. I don't know <laughs> at this point. Um, Oh, that is, uh, I would call the president of the United States, Mr. President. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I'd ever, call I would call him. like a president from another country or a prime minister or something. Mr. Prime Minister or yeah. whatever. I, I would, I would think... do that. But then again, the Shinra company was al- almost its own government because it like governed the places that were under it. So it became such a powerful company that it, it, it became the ruling power. Yeah, it was. It was the so ruling power. So maybe you but... would call... You know, maybe. You, maybe I, you would call uh, President Shinra uh, Mr. President. I could see that, especially from his dad, because he's such an asshole. And um, he also, remember, one of their things is that they they put up the, the statue. Or they're going, they have plans to put up the statue that we see in Advent Children. Right, yeah, of yeah. The, uh, of the meteor coming to the earth and the, the live stream taking care of it. Um and he does that for two reasons. And he says this in this, in this um, short story. He says, we're, we're putting it up as, as a statue for the people. And also, it claims that area as ours. Because the Shinra company is back. Because they put this symbol in the middle of town. Right, yeah. So. Yeah. I go. don't know. Uh, that part's weird and it's like almost like a double-edged thing like i don't personally i don't see a reason to bring him back to bring back rufus if you're gonna make him kind of that way like he's like well 
I'll do it for the people, but I'll also do it because it's mine now. So I'm still an asshole. So Rufus hasn't really changed? Yeah, at apparently. All? He doesn't change until Advent Children when he whips off his, uh, you know, whoosh, whips off his yeah, shirt. The or, slow-mo. Yeah, his, uh, his fucking kimono and reveals that, oh, I can walk. I've been lying. And it's like, well... <laughs> Okay. Apparently he's just been in like pain and that it's hard to walk. Yeah, I don't know how though because he used it's this escape hatch to, to get out. Why? Why would anyone think he would be injured at all? Why? Why is anyone fooled by this wheelchair act if we all know uh, that he escaped without harm? Right? I, he wasn't. He wasn't in any wheelchair during this fucking thing. Do like, you not like this retcon, dude? <laughs> I'm thinking about Wait, it more I'm thinking and more. Twice. You. Would- you don't like this retcon. I, I'm thinking more and more about it, and <laughs> they... This doesn't make any sense. Yeah, he's in the wheelchair. I'd be like, boss, what the fuck is with the wheelchair? You were fine a week ago. Like, did you did you pull a muscle? Like, what happened? But no, no one questions it. They just go visit him. He's in his wheelchair. He wasn't in the wheelchair and before. he's got his Jedi robe on. Yeah, his Jedi robe. Uh, it's... I, I think it's stupid. I think it's absolutely ridiculous that he's not in a fucking wheelchair now, but he's in a wheelchair later. Well, it's because he gets the stigma and he gets a little sick and he wants but to go But he into can the still fucking walk. And he can still walk. Just because you can walk doesn't mean you want to. I guess that's true. I mean, that's sort of the <laughs> idea behind, like, modern transportation, I guess. But Jesus, a wheelchair? There you go. All right. So he's he's getting questioned by this army guy. They they want to find out what's going on. Um, I wrote down here, kinky what's whips. I, I, there was like yeah, a weird scene. There was a they, part where he saw some whips and he's like, what are these for? Yeah, like various whips. And I'm like, oh. Well, They're for like, torture, but yeah, it was so lighthearted. Yeah, I was like, man, is this like the Honey Bee Inn or what? What's going on? Is that where they're holding them? I'd be like, dude, this is awesome. Uh, but no. Uh, they also reveal that they are building a new town outside of Midgar, which is probably a good idea. Since Midgar, Midgar too. is, uh, yeah, Midgar too. Yeah, there you go. Um, there, there's another really great line in this where there's a, oh man, a guy asks somebody else. He's like, are you a doctor or are you a scientist? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Oh, wh- you can say both. Like uh, if you, you are in that situation, you you can, you can, but it's like, okay. So are you assuming that if I am a scientist, I'm evil because it sounds like doctor, are you a doctor or are you a scientist? Yeah. I'm like <laughs> both, I guess I'm trying to find a cure. Like it's uh, I, am I, I can a doctor, I can perform surgeries. <laughs> or uh, am I a scientist? Yeah, I, That's uh, the song that he sings as well. Yeah, I found that to be very awkward. Um, and we also get a... While Rufus is captured, There's there are other individuals who are held captive as well. And there, this is where the Hobbit scene really kicks in when, they, when they're like, you know what? This thing's going to flood and we're going to just float out of here. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, fine. Yeah. So fine, you can the float. place where they're holding them, the exit is at the top. And they can all float on. Okay. Yeah, it starts filling with water, I think, something like that. I don't know. It was really awkward. And I just wrote float, like the FF8 thing. <laughs> float! Yeah. <laughs> um, we we also get a little more insight into the black liquid, the um, substance of... I don't think we fully explained the water bringing them up. They're in a prison. Right, Okay. Prison leaks. The, there's suddenly water starts leaking out of the prison like a lot, like a faucet. And it's getting up to their ankles. And then all they go is like, huh, I guess we'll just be able to float out of here. Yeah. And then the really buff dude's like, uh, I'm what if mostly we get, muscle. I can't what just if we get hypothermia. Float. Yeah. What if we die before the water fills the room? Or like, <laughs> maybe there's a, a, a finite amount yeah, of water. Yeah. Maybe there's like a water in. level. Yeah, and it, underground uh, it, like w- is what happens. It only gets you. It only gets you like twenty feet higher, and you're like, oh, "God damn it!" Now we're gonna die. Yeah, now we're gonna drown. We're gonna like freeze. Shark in, in the water. water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they do end up seeing some of the stigma stigma ooze in the water, though, and it's it's implied that this stuff is alive in mud? a way. 
Mm-hmm. They I said it was know, stigma yeah. ooze. Maybe it was. Maybe they're all just paranoid. But and the scientist is like, I got a test kit. But my God, this part of the story gets like epically dark. It, it, like there's this guy whose wife is floating away, and then some one of the captors just blasts her, and the water just kills her. Just fucking boom gone and this shit is like this shit is all over this one like it's extremely violent rufus gets his hand shot like it's nuts man these people are these people mean business right they just execute this guy's wife and it's all like oh and he stared the at the blood spot. is in the water yeah and i'm like damn man that's yeah i don't, definitely don't uh and then we get this uh this wonderfully named cliff resort area where apparently they shinra built this as a as a getaway for employees who are having too hard of a time. Literally cause... called Cliff Resort. Yeah, Cliff Resort. I made a comment here. I was like, this kind of sounds like like a movie script. Um, or like a be slug like, line? Yeah, exterior, Cliff Resort, uh, day five, noon, you know. And they, they, they just put Cliff Resort as the name. And the guy <laughs> in the end is like, dude, what are you, stupid? No, Cliff Resort, you come up with a name for it. I, I just wanted it to be a resort in the cliffs, not... Not a cliff resort. Are you fucking nuts? What is that? That is that, that doesn't that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, it's nothing. Like, what, uh, they would come cliff up with a resort. name for it. They, they, come on. Uh, so and yeah, then, if you had a mountain resort and you just called it mountain resort, it'd be weird. It's like well, also impossible to Google. Yeah, I mean that would be the real problem. Yeah, it'd be like you have you 10 can't million get, results. You, you can't get any <laughs> hits on that website because you just called yourself mountain resort. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, that's <laughs> or you get all the hits or yeah, or you it's get one all of the, the two. Hits. So that, that to be, be honest, yeah, it's a risk, right? Yeah. Um. So apparently Shinra, as they should be to some extent, is definitely held responsible for all of the events of Final Fantasy VII. The whole live stream pouring out, the whole meteor thing. I mean, the meteor is a little bit of a stretch being their fault, but um. Well, they created Sephiroth. Yeah, I they created the yeah. super soldiers. They used Genova and that. That's what brings the meteor down. True. That is, yeah. But, so. I don't know. I don't know. It seems more like Genova for the meteor part. Might be a little more to blame. But definitely them for raping and pillaging the planet to the point where the weapons come out and uh, to the point where Mako is like depleting life as we know it. So I suppose, yeah. But the pe- the people hate it because Sephiroth is gone at this point, so they can't blame him anymore because he's dead. Um, so they blame Shinra. Their public image is awful, but improving apparently because they, they are. They got to put a statue in the middle of town. Yeah, they put the statue in the middle of town. Reeve, as we know from, uh, you know, Dirge of Cerberus and his role in FF7 as minor as it was, the controller of Kate Sith is he's pretty pissed off about about the whole Shinra thing, and he kind of shits off and does his own thing. Um, and instead of killing him for the traitor he is, uh, Rufus decides, you know what? He's out there. He's helping people. He used to work for me, so it's, it's good PR, right? It's good PR. You know, I would say the voices in this one <laughs> were pretty spot on. The Reno and Rude were really good. And yeah, even, even Kate Sith, as much as I hate his voice, that was pretty good. Uh, pretty good Kate Sith. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, the production value is fantastic when it comes to the live streams uh, stuff. So yeah. we also they also start passing out what they called stimulant, which I assume is cocaine. Uh, <laughs> it's a painkiller. From Big Pharma, they're <laughs> starting to really produce these things, pump them out for the public so that they aren't in as much suffering. Well, they start to, after they find out that's a really good painkiller for the stigma, and then Rufus goes, oh, I know what business we need to get into. Yeah. Yeah. Let's pump this shit out. Yeah, and then we, speaking of Rufus, there's this very, very awkward moment where him and Rude get into this sweat-inducing sparring match is what they uh what they call it it was like a, it's like you know you get a little carried away just kind of punching people i guess and then it turns into a sweat inducing sparring match <laughs> uh, that's that's the natural progression <laughs> of play fighting i do believe have you gotten to the evil scientist um, or or is he a doctor it's, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I don't know if he's a doctor or a scientist. That's okay. the, isn't that kind of the ultimate question? So at the end of the day here? all these sick people are being healed by this doctor. 
or they're being taken care of by what was their local doctor. Right. And Rufus, although the doctor doesn't seem to trust him at first, Rufus kind of gets a little friendly with him. And then he finds out the doctor's like plan was to make something better than Sephiroth. And it was just the weirdest twist. Yeah. Ever in this story. So the doctor's like, <laughs> he suddenly turns into an evil doctor scientist question mark. Yeah. A doctor and or, and then, scientist. then someone else kills him and they assume that it's some sort of remnant. Um, like some sort of uh, Sephiroth remnant, in which case in my mind, I was like, Oh, it must be one of Kadaj's people. Maybe I don't even know why they would want to kill that guy. Yeah. But I, I wasn't sure like who tried to kill the doctor or the scientist or whatever. It was confusing to me. Yeah. I don't know either. I don't know. Um, this, uh, another, another great line from this thing was, uh, water has a mind of its own. I thought that one was a keeper. Um, because they were talking about like, oh, well, I mean, the stigma will spread inevitably because it gets in water and water has a mind of its own. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's really odd because it, it, you get the stigma and it only works if you're depressed and sad. So like, what if you're just depressed and sad? Do you still get the stigma even if you're not around it? Is it like a walking dead thing that everyone's infected and, uh, if you die or you, you just get the stigma, if that, you must get sad, that must be it. That must be it. Uh, so you have to first have it in your system and then be depressed and then like a cold sore you got to get really stressed out and then it'll pop up oh okay i can see that i I don't have cold sores because i'm not infected by that shit yeah because we're not disgusting (laughs) but (laughs) but uh yes it would be it seems like it would be similar to similar to that um you know, one thing I do, I did give a lot of credit to the voice acting, but I, the guy who did the doctor near the end, uh, his, it just seemed very robotic and like awkward. And I think that added to the overall weirdness of the finale, the little twist at the end with the, it's a twist, but it just kind of ended. I want to say that this is probably the worst written part of, of the all the live thing. stream things. Yeah. This is the one that did not have a story. It had a series of unfortunate events. Yeah. Starring Rufus Shinra. Uh, starring Rufus Shinra. Exactly. And uh, there was no beginning, middle, and an end. It was just kind of like, oh, he escaped the thing. Yeah. And then we're going to look at Reno and Rude for a while. And, and then we're going to go back to Rufus and now he gets attacked. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. And, and then they float out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They float and out. And then there's an evil scientist who gets killed by someone else. Yeah. Those are just events. Nothing. No one's driving anything. Yeah. Nothing happens. Yeah. Lords of Salem. That's what this is. It's just a plotless thing. Yeah. It's just a, this is happening. This is why it's sort of there. Okay. No All one's right. going to fight it. You can't fight At it. At least we found out how, how, how he, lived. he lived. Yeah. We found that out in the first 10 minutes though. So it's like, well, I'll the, go through the next two hours. I think the best part though, the, uh, as if the the old cliff resort wasn't enough they created an even more awesome awesomely named healin lodge i was confused <laughs> so i want to see a text version of this thing because maybe it just sounds like you get the word healing but like lazy speak so healin yeah, I've come on down be, the old healing lodge. Heal got them, them, uh, got <laughs> them potions, them Phoenix Downs. You get a little unconscious and work right, your ass right back right up. Right. I know. I was like, <laughs> healing lodge, and I swear to God, that's what they were saying. Like it, it was. Oh like, yeah, go down to the healing lodge. I'm like, what? and then they were like, oh, because you got to go heal there. And I was like, what? Yeah. So they actually mean healing? Yeah, they do. Yeah, healing, like healing there. That's where you go to get better. It's, uh, I mean, we call those hospitals here, but apparently not everyone Heal and can, lodge. can call it a hospital. I need to go to the Heal and Lodge. I am bleeding profusely. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, yeah, some of the... Uh, I, I will say this one did have some pretty solid uh, production value. I mean, there were a few scenes with Rufus and... or Yeah, Rufus, Reno, Rude, the Turks, the dudes who are in helicopters all the time. And the helicopter sound effects were yep. pretty spot on. It was well well done. It was uh, drowning out at times, but I think that's kind of the idea is to really truly make it feel... I was listening to it on my little phone speaker. Yeah. So. Make it feel as unique and 
uh, true to the source as possible. And they, I don't know. I liked that element of it, but honestly, this one, oh man, after, after the awesome Nanaki one, I kind of feel a little let down with this and it's a, it's a two hour, two hour listen. And I felt like I could probably do it in like five minutes. Just like if I were to sit down and be like, okay, this is what happens take a five yeah. minute review of it you could um, you could do a five minutes yeah overview yeah so i don't know this one i'm not feeling as much i feel like it's probably one of the lesser one but of the it's lesser probably the one streams. that took the most work <laughs> yeah live stream to do no, seriously i, I kind of uh, feel bad for that too they're like man this is the one like this is the one we need to do all the all the people for yeah. it's like they gobble that stuff up, man. Yeah, That's I'm all, sure. All the live stream is about is FF7 stuff. Yeah, they probably love this just as much as the other ones. So there you go. You know, go for it. But yeah, if you guys want to check that out, we'll have a YouTube link in the episode description if you want to listen to the live stream.net presents. Yeah, I, uh, you guys go ahead and do that. I strongly, I strongly recommend it. I mean, we don't have. We don't have these in English, so it's awesome that they were able to do that. Every time I hear that guy's voice, though, I, I just think of the uh, this fucking awesome song here. Uh, let's, we'll, we'll just give it till it hits the vocals. To... <laughs> How long do we have? Not long enough. Hell yeah, dude. I feel like they got this guy to do their uh, introduction, but... See if we get uh, blocked on Twitch with this. Yeah, Psh, nobody knows who these people we'll find are. Out. How long? Is- <laughs> well, I can't stop it now because okay. it would be disruptive. That's right. Is the is your favorite song? Uh, you know, I'm gonna have to say top three. I don't know if I'd say favorite, but uh, let's. Uh, this is where our voice actor for the introduction got his start, I would say. Would okay. be this death metal band, uh, he's, Cradle of Filth. He's into the band. Or Six Feet Under, Seed of Filth. Yeah. Six Feet Under, Seed of Filth. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I think of every time I hear that. And it's weird because that guy, uh, he didn't do him in the beginning. It was like just, it was like Livestream.net Presents. Really? Because that's the only one I remember. I feel I might be wrong. At least here, for the last three. <laughs> I, I feel like in the beginning it was just... It was a normal guy. It wasn't a, a guttural a guttural <laughs> man as it is now. <laughs> but seriously, I, I... Man, I need to listen to some metal, dude. Yeah. Feeling like, ooh, I'm feeling the energy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the seed of filth. The seed of filth. Yeah. And then people will be like, you guys don't like eyes on me because you listen to that garbage. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that is garbage. So <laughs> don't, don't, uh, don't get me wrong. What we just heard is awful, but <laughs> uh, fuck. Let's, uh, let's, let's get into a couple questions here. Let's do it. man so we have a couple here from our wonderful wonderful oh phone line that hold we pitch. on hold on yeah ne- what i'm gonna interrupt you and i'm sorry go to questions for the show and answer shinru's goddamn metal soundtrack question that we've skipped over like 16 times dude okay and he keeps bumping because he says that we didn't answer it i don't think we did answer it i think we looked at it and said we're not going to answer that today. We did. And right. then for months, we haven't answered it. We'll do this one, and then we'll do the ones on the okay. phone that actually have been unanswered even longer. But I do. Okay. All I, right. they, we're fucking slacking. Okay. Uh, this one is titled, What is the better metal slash rock song in Final Fantasy 15? Okay. We'll play a few seconds of each. So one is called Easy Rider and the other one's called Gone. Yeah, so here is Final Fantasy XV Gone. Shinru gives us news every week. We gotta, gotta give back. Yeah, gotta get blocked.
I don't remember this. I mean, it might be on the soundtrack, but... Hmm. Okay, that was 30 seconds. Okay, so we have Gone is now Gone. Let's okay. see how much of an easy rider easy rider is. Hmm. they made by the same person you think <laughs> i think they might actually be the same group yeah i like the second one i like easy rider all right um, they're both i don't know i love that sort of music so they're both kind of awesome hmm. you know i can't even decide which one i like uh which one i like more i they they're both great sounding i don't really remember them from the game i like the epic boss theme probably the most um because like i don't know for me for me i i do love the metal the metal is great and it's one of my favorite genres but honestly oh oh uh stola says they're at justice monsters 5 the mini game oh my god oh okay uh yeah i prefer the the big piece that you run into when you were in a big boss fight um, I like big, massive things like that. And metal a lot of times is that way. But I feel like in Final Fantasy, it's stronger when it's something almost more classical and just really big. Like in 13, like the 13 final boss fights yeah, like are the, fucking great. Right. They're huge. And it's, or the um, Bartandalus fight. Yeah, that's like nuts. It's like the, it's, it's godly is yeah. what it is. And I, I honestly think that's way better. Um so I I would say neither. I'll say the the one song Cop out. whose name I don't know. No. <laughs> if I had to choose, though, I like the first one more. Okay, there you go. But there I, you go, Chinru. We answered yeah. it. God damn it. Yeah, bumped up. You know what? I'm going to delete it now. Just just by just delete the question. Yeah, I'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's going oh my god. So, All right, uh, we got one here from our good friend, the Game and Asian Cajun. It's been sitting here a while. Let's uh let's check this shit out. What's up, Ultima Final Fantasy? It's the Game and Asian Cajun V1 Nation. I've got a question for you. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> I know that the podcast has uh, been going strong now, getting more popular every day with events like KupoCon and such. <laughs> uh, I was wondering, actually, if y'all yeah. plan to do any more kind of collaborations with any other Final Fantasy personalities. Uh, seems like more and more of them are popping up lately, which I don't know if that's good, bad, neutral, however it is. But, uh, you know, I know y'all done some things with Limit Break Radio. Um, and just wondering if y'all ever thought about reaching out to anybody else, maybe kind of use that for some of these filler episodes between the 13 to 13 while well, lightning returns play through. Uh, and eventually when you get to heaven's word and maybe Stormblood. So we're just uh, wondering what the plans are. See if maybe we can get a sneak peek into the future of USF. Keep enjoying the grind guys. And we'll talk to you later. Bye. Mm, other. Well, the thing is, I stopped listening to other Final Fantasy personalities because they weren't doing what we were doing. Well, I mean, that that was I was disappointed at the time. Now there are a lot more YouTube channels that are Final Fantasy based now than there were 2 years ago, yeah, which there, is crazy. there are some that are amazing. They Probably because they're like, "Oh, theories. Final Fantasy 15 is going to come out in a year. I better start my YouTube channel that goes in depth in Final Fantasy games." Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's good for you. Uh <laughs> at the time I would drive around a lot because I delivered pizzas. And so I picked up on Final Fantasy Union. And uh, later I got into Limit Break Radio. They were a lot more fun for me. And I was just sort of disappointed at my options. Yeah. So, you know, we were like, hey, let's play all 14 of the Final Fantasy games or 12 at the time because we Psych. weren't going to do it. Yeah. Um, and uh, then I convinced twice to do a podcast for some reason he said yes so that's why we're here and, and we go into the final fantasy games in a way that had not yet been done now there are people that are probably better at it than us on youtube now yeah uh, that are yeah. going into some real deep shit that i would have we would have touched upon on our show and have touched upon on our show but are like i don't know 
I don't know. We wouldn't have gone that crazy. Yeah, like the 13 lore, I'm not... Uh I'm not pro on but necessarily. But what we so. don't make up in specificity, who we make up in just breadth, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or or width. Um, the future of the Ultima Final Fantasy podcast is uh, to finish the rest of the games. <laughs> yeah, um, I would love to do more collaborative stuff with other podcasters. I feel like I might be more interested in doing that for um our other show nude clan and the only reason why i say that is because we have a much wider audience uh that we can tap into a lot more people that it would be appropriate to do a collaborative podcast with i mean it's a lot of fun when we have the limit break guys on no doubt but if we're not doing something big like farewell to final fantasy 11 we're never coming back to you it doesn't really necessarily mesh as much fun as those are like it's so I, I, I guess it would have to be a, a specific topic or something that we're equally passionate and equally knowledgeable about that oh, I would be willing to do an episode with someone else from the community. But, I mean, the, the trouble is, guys, I don't really partake in the community that much. Like, I don't listen to other shows. I don't really watch YouTube We that have much. enough Final Fantasy in our lives. You know? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. So it's like, oh, okay, this new Final Fantasy video, maybe I'll watch it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, lore stuff. What's it going to tell me that I don't know? Like, how much? <laughs> yeah, and a lot of the stuff that they will tell you is um, might be something you don't know because it's just a theory. So, sure. and I, I, as we much got a lot as... of stuff for Final Fantasy 15 because yeah. of a lot of YouTube videos and stuff. Yeah. That was appreciated. It, it is. It's great. It's great. But I don't know. It almost seems like a. Yeah, it would almost seem awkward to have like a collaboration where you know one of them one of the parties knows infinitely more about the subject than the others so. well then it can be an interview we've done that yeah we have we have so, so. i guess it's it's more of a just i just haven't done it yet i don't know the other people in the community besides limit break and what there's mr happy yeah and that one guy who had all the ff15 theory videos yeah, um, Final, Final Fantasy, Fantasy Peasant. Yeah, Peasant, yeah. yeah that, that's a good channel. Yeah, he knows a lot of stuff. Uh, oh, well, he claims to know a lot of stuff, at least. he. Um, some of it's a lot of he- really heavy theory videos. Okay. But. A lot of, uh, maybe not theory, it's uh, hypotheses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shit that I would not ever fucking make a video about, so I commend him for that. Sure, but. yeah. It's just a lot of a lot of digging. I'm not against it. If anybody has any they think we should check out, then send them our way. Yeah, we'll. Uh, I'd be more than happy to do a collaborative. Those are a lot of fun. It's just like a guest episode with our listeners. Those are yeah some of the best that we have. So let's do another one here from um, this one. I believe is from a Swedish man. I don't know. Hello, Dorothy Oma here. Hello, uh, Joseph and Caleb. Hey, twice your impersonation of me Ooh. it was commendable. That is good. But I guess it takes a sweet to do a sweet. Takes Diggity. a sweet. Diggity. So, <laughs> here is the review again, the items review. <laughs> Darth Yoma style. <laughs> Darth Yoma here. After almost three years of listening to this podcast, I guess it is time to leave my first items review. When I grew up, I couldn't really talk to anyone about Final Fantasy. But thanks to the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast, I have found like-minded people and new friends. I've been enjoying all the episodes this week for about three years soon because of the host's good chemistry. Keep up the good work. I wish you both good luck on the future episodes from the bottom of my Swedish accent heart. <laughs> there we go. Now you will never forget. So I see. Oh, and because I'm paying for this call, <laughs> and a lot of money, I'm leaving you with this question. If you can, if you both can pronounce this. It's a tongue twister. First I say it in English. Seven C six seamen were handled by seven singing nurses on the sinking ship Shanghai. And now in Swedish 
Sju sjuka sjömän sköttes av sju skönsjungande sjuksköterskor på det sjunkande skeppet Shanghai. Thank you. Ah, uh, seven uh, nurses shagging at Shanghai. Ship shing. Yes. But it was too long to remember. Dude, the crazy part is that it's a... Hamin hamin hamadir. Yeah. Hamin hamin ding dong ding dong. Yeah. Shanghai. What the fuck, man? Uh, thank you, <laughs> thank you for your for your very entertaining uh, message, John. Um, I can't I can't say it because I don't know for sure what was said. Um, but I am glad that you have finally left left us an iTunes review. He that. sells seashells by the seashore. In yeah, Shanghai shagging nurses. Yeah, ship Shanghai ship shagging. Shank, not. Yeah. So. Uh, Fuck, that's sheep shanking. That's fun. Uh, thank you for for all your years of. Uh, yeah, of Darth Doom was an early one, like yeah, really was, early, yeah. like epis. Like I want to say, Final Fantasy Four review early. Yeah, which is like two months into the show. Pretty goddamn early. Yeah, that's a long time ago. We're coming up on. Uh, we're coming up on what is it? Three years here in the next like month. Two weeks. I think the lightning returns. The episode after lightning returns, we will have our three-year mark. Maybe one more. So it's been a long time, man. It's crazy. The golden days, man. Episode one, crazy. episode two, FF one. Two. By the way, if you want to leave us a message, it's three eight five two zero four three nine two one. That's three eight five two zero four three nine two. Yeah, give us your best tongue twisters, please. Uh, uh you know. <laughs> maybe not maybe if they're not a paragraph long <laughs> yeah maybe maybe so we we've been neglecting another very important segment that uh that i it hurts to bring up but when occasionally we fuck up and we say things that it maybe aren't as true as some of the other things that we do say fake news fake news yeah um and for that, I mean, we had no choice but to create a correction segment, and we have one of those this week, so let's, let's see what we've got. Shore SM58 microphones, $200. Adobe Audition software for mixing episodes, $30 a month. Lipson hosting fees, $20 a month. A weekly FF podcast with great listeners, priceless. There are some things money can buy. For every other nitpicking motherfucker on the planet... There's the correction segment. <laughs> uh, this one's titled Supernova from Matunica. Yes, I love the correction jingle. Mm-hmm. Very small error, but during the Bandroom quiz, Joe called Ozma Supernova. Caleb said it was a move from a boss in nine. But it's not. It's <sighs> Sephiroth's move in Final Fantasy VII. Oh, my God. Twice, Fake. look at what you have done. Fake news right there. Fake news. He doesn't really care that we got it wrong. He just wanted to hear that sweet-ass jingle, <laughs> which uh, I can't blame you. It's a, it's a really fun one, it's, and it's very underutilized. I feel like we, I feel like we mess up enough that this, this thing should be weekly <laughs> if you guys wanted it to be. Now, credit all, that is not an invitation. Please, God, don't do that to me. <laughs> I... I will never want to talk to you if you if you just tear it apart each time. It hurts, but a little bit of pain um, is good. Too much will spoil the meat, though. What um, the f- What? <laughs> it's, uh, too much pain spoils the meat. Huh. <laughs> yeah. It's a Game of Thrones quote, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I, I could just start the, the whole show right here from the beginning. Oh, that reminds me of... What is that fucking movie? There's a movie out there. I don't want to. I don't want to say the wrong title, but she's like, "Oh, she's a vegetarian now because when you are eating another animal's flesh, you are eating their fear because they were like afraid." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This sounds familiar to me. This is like, like is it August Osage County? I think it might be. Hmm, I, anyway, I don't know. That's, I was like, "What the fuck is this vegan bullshit that I, you're trying to spew at me, twice? Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know. Not that. There you go. <sighs> anyway, uh, <laughs> shit. I, um, you know what? Fuck, man. We have another. We have another segment. Uh, yeah. Questions for most of you. Let's just do that. I keep forgetting that we have like five segments. <laughs> Okay. 
So last week we asked what JRPG series would you guys recommend for a quote unquote disgruntled Final Fantasy fan as far as the direction of the series. Final Fantasy is fan? Concerned. Yeah. Is that well, who we're talking to? Yeah, that's <laughs> Final I'm, Fantasy fan. I just can't stop thinking about that uh the fiends. Uh, I can't the stop four thinking fiends. Uh, Yeah. I, I can't stop thinking about that mountaintop uh Get away hey, from uh, from fucking Final Fantasy VII's universe. <laughs> oh my god! The healing, the healing, healing tent, healing lodge, the old healing lodge. Yeah, <laughs> I can't get that out of my head. I need to go. So uh, Alistair says Persona for sure, but playing three, four, and five one after the other might be a bit much. Since when were you disgruntled though? Uh, since really never, I guess. But no, but we have heard a lot of people that are like, ah, fuck the games after nine. Yeah, or uh, the last doing this show. I mean, we six. have listeners that kind of come in and out, and you know, there was a certain point where they're interested in the show because they want us to get to their favorite um, game, and then as soon as that game drops off, we don't hear from them anymore. Yeah, yeah, because we shit on it, and uh, <laughs> well, no, I don't. Have we really shat on a game besides like Dirge of Cerberus? Um, like really, just. No, laid into I, it. I don't think so. I, I, I think we lay into Final Fantasy VIII. We lay into things but about eight is like game. it's like the the scapegoat. You know, like if I'm kind of mad, um, I can do a cheap shot at Final Fantasy VIII. It's like Caleb Craig on Nude Clan. If I if I feel like there needs to be a joke or some kind of a slight, I just look over and I'm like, okay, who's the easiest target? Oh, Caleb, and then I just insult him. In oh, well, he's the easiest target because he's the biggest. Yeah. Well, I mean, I honestly, I can literally <laughs> not not be looking at him when I, when he's here. So, so yes, easy target, easy target. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Case in point. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Caleb Craig, not on the show today, uh, uh, not in the room either. So that's, that's unfortunate. Speaking of round targets. Yeah. Speaking, speaking of, of round, uh, <laughs> will four, five, five, nine, one says not really a series, but I am Setsuna. Felt like a good throwback. So mm. might keep an eye on anything coming out of the Tokyo RPG factory by Square Enix. Is that one Craig played? Be. I believe he did. Yeah. Okay. That sounds it's funny. How many of these offshoot games Craig plays? Yeah. Yeah. How few of the final fantasies he beats. He plays a lot of them, but he only beats a handful. Yeah. Oh, uh, Alistair says they all want us to go to Chrono Trigger. Um, that's also why we're holding tactics hostage. Cause uh, we don't want to have the listeners to be like, all right, Oh, there's tactics. I'm done. This game. Uh, Alistair comes back to say, yeah, I don't have so much of a collection of series that are good, but I do have a few standalone non FF JRPGs. Okay. Yeah, those are? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Uh, Abrax says, Bravely Default and Bravely Second are very old school FF, Final Fantasy setting, job system, turn based battles, random encounters, etc. Okay. One. True. But Bravely Default did start out as a Final Fantasy. Yeah, so it, it should. Uh, plus one to I Am Setsuna. It's more reminiscent of Chrono Trigger, but still fairly close to a Final Fantasy feel. Another I Am Setsuna. Yeah. That's another vote for I Am Setsuna. Sui Koden series. Sui Koden, I believe. Uh, Sui Koden. I've only played the DS spinoff, the tier, tier Crease, but I really enjoyed it, and that's supposed to be the roster one. The roster one. Or if you're a little flexible in the setting, you can play the true best JRPG series. Final oh Persona, he says. Oh, uh, one and two are he pretty. He says Persona's better. How dare you? Yeah, pretty archaic. I've never played it. I don't care. Pretty archaic dungeon he, crawlers. He must be wrong. <laughs> though two has a great story, but starting out with Persona three, they are absolutely incredible. He says so. Uh, okay. It's yeah. another one for Persona. Yeah, Persona definitely says Black Mage, Justin. Older ones are a little hard to go back to, but 3, 4, and 5 are all awesome. Dragon Quest, for sure, mostly the 8th edition. Suikoden is a decent is decent as a series, and he's a big fan of Xenosaga. Very high sci-fi, but turn-based, and convoluted story make for a very good older FF feel. That's a good, go. uh, good call. Uh, Troy Taku Amazuki says, if I had to give one series that would match up to Final Fantasy titles, story, and gameplay in terms of how engaging and fun all of it is, he would suggest Dragon Quest or the Tales series, although I think people 
know now that I have a certain bias towards Tales, but and he loves that series to a fault, apparently. Recommending other games that don't have as many titles would be Persona, and I'm guessing you guys are probably tired of hearing that pop up, but the games are <laughs> seriously great. I could go on, but hey, I imagine since the release of 5, everyone has the gist of what these games are. Persona 5 will eventually, over time, be reviewed by Nude Clan, because we did a vote that was like half a year early. Yeah. So, so it'll happen. Yeah. Lastly, one of, on my, show. Yeah, one of my all fi- all-time favorites would be the Dot .hack series, slash, slash. Uh, the only thing that makes this a rough recommendation is that it's extremely hard to get a hold of. They are. I feel this series needs more love, and some sort of HD remake would probably greatly benefit the series as a whole. Maybe then CyberConnect would feel like giving the series the ending it deserves instead of resorting to cell phone games only released in Japan that only have a setting in the Dot .hack universe and doesn't expand on the franchise as a whole. If you're sensing some spite, then you would be right, as I am salty and triggered whenever the series comes up, because I love it so much, and it pains me that they aren't doing anything with it. I know I brought it up, and I essentially triggered myself, but I can't ignore if you're asking for other recommendations. There you go. Saga Frontier, Sukoden, Breath of Fire, and my goodness, Earthbound is just so good. Really? Just anything SNES, says Um, Chris? Okay, I want to play Breath of Fire. And I want to play Earthbound someday for Nude Clan. I think that would be cool. Yeah, that would be. Yeah. Uh, Hail Blue said, I didn't see anyone that mentioned Star Ocean as a series. Uh, don't play the new one, though. He says it's terrible. Okay. Uh, good recommendations yeah, there. Right? A lot for Persona. Yeah, a lot of Persona stuff, which, uh, you know, it's, I got, I've got hundreds and hundreds of hours, so why not, you know? <laughs> why? Well, we all have hundreds of, unless you're going to die, like, t- in the next three days yeah i don't think we I all am. have hundreds of hours left uh, i don't think i will so no? yeah okay. it's well, why not why not do persona right there you go um yeah thank you guys for submitting your responses to our question from us to you and remember to jump on the website to give us questions comments concerns uh, we won't listen to the concerns but you can leave them there if you want um, Our question from us to you this week is, what did you think of Lightning Returns? Yeah, did you play it? I want to hear, I want to know how many of our listeners actually played this. I think I'll put a poll. <laughs> I think I'll put a poll on this episode for this week, and it'll be a yes or no, did you play Lightning Returns? Yeah. And then maybe a second one that's, did you beat Lightning Returns? Um so I want to get a I want to get an idea. And then in the forum, you have to answer, what did you think of Lightning Returns? And then... You got to ask us questions about Lightning Returns. Yeah. We've been light on questions for the last few reviews, and uh, I'm going to remind people, please, for the sake of of us not skipping anything you would not want us to skip, Yeah, ask us some questions. Yeah. I mean, even if it ends up being uh, like Shinru's a lot of times where he brings up things that I feel like we probably only bring up naturally because we've been asked so many times. It's like a repetition thing. We're like, oh yeah, let's make sure we talk about the final dungeon for 20 minutes. Let's make sure we do this and this and this. We can't forget about this. Uh, it's been burned into our our mind's eye, but there are things that we will leave out if you guys don't bring it to our attention. Uh, some things to us are very minor and they might have been a bigger deal. So make yeah. sure you get on there and give us your review and your questions for Lightning Returns. Final Fantasy 13. <laughs> All right, Joyce. Speed time. Uh, you can go to ultimafinalfantasy.com for that stuff. Uh, if you want, you can go to youtube.com slash ultimafinalfantasy, see the old Twitch videos that were live, and there's a good, you know, seven minutes of extra content out there for you if you want to check it out there. Yeah, each Speaking time. of, the Twitch channel is twitch.tv slash ultimafinalfantasy. You can also contact us on Facebook or, you know, just hang out and talk about Final Fantasy on the Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Ultimate Final Fantasy. You can tweet me at Joseph DeGolier. Me at UFF Podcast. And you can support the show by clicking through our Amazon link, getting stuff there, uh, clicking on the PayPal link. Thank you very much, um, Pixel Edged, who gave us a uh, PayPal donation. Or was that for Nude Clan? That well, might have been for Nude Clan. You know, it said... I think he told me it was going to be for Nude Clan, but it totally said UFF on the thing. So. Oh, did it say UFF? But, okay, maybe that's why I'm confused. Yeah, so... It's probably for Nude Clan. Thank you, though. But thank you, anyway. Yes, yes. Um, and then we uh, we also have a Patreon link and uh, a couple new Patreon donors. Yeah, we do have... Uh, I think we've gained two this week. Let me, let me pull that up so we can give them a nice shout-out here on the show. Uh, thank you for to Victor Groner... 
It's an awesome last name for your recent pledge. And Matt Burke. Thank you guys so much for supporting our epic journey through the Final Fantasy series. I have 64 or 63 hours in Lightning Returns, and I'm still not done. So thank you for uh, helping us through this thing. It's It means a lot to us. It, it really does. It does. All right, twice. Well, we shall review Lightning Returns next time, and um, we'll see you next week. Oh, yeah, there's that Cosmo Canyon. Enjoy the grind, guys. Enjoy the grind. This has been another production of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. The show is produced by Joseph de Gaulier and Caleb Schweiss with music and editing by Joseph de Gaulier, parodies and clips from their respective authors, of course. You can get all of our episodes as well as our Let's Plays at ultimafinalfantasy.com. You can also contact us on Twitter at UFF Podcast as well as our contact page on our website. Be sure to subscribe and review our podcast. Your reviews may get read on the show and look forward to the next episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast.